Stick around, babe. Well, family and friends have been after me for quite a while to start telling some stories, so I guess this is about as good a time as any. Nice little spot here by the creek for the picnic table. That's hard to beat. About, uh, can't remember whether it was 87 or 88, but I was on a elk hunting trip, a pack-in trip with family in the Big Hole Mountains of Idaho. That's on the west side of Teton Valley, Idaho, and across the t other side of the Tetons from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, my brother-in-law, Lloyd, my sister Val, Val and Lloyd's daughter Stacy and her husband Rob and Rob's dad, Joe, we packed back in, I can't remember, it was probably three hours back in there into the high peaks and set up wall tents and a camp in there. And Val and Lloyd came in uh, the next day, which is the day before hunting season, and we spent the night and had a good camp. And then the next morning we did some elk hunting and, you know, I got close to some elk, couldn't quite get, get the bulge on them in the timber and uh, hunted down there slow and easy all day and uh, so did Rob, so did Joe. Nobody killed one that morning. We'd never hunted in that exact spot before so we're pretty new to it. Come here babe. Come on. Jim. Get over here. Goof. And uh, so Val and Lloyd decided that they had to go back to the ranch. They had uh, 150, 160 head of mama cows, and they had about 40 or 50 head of horses, and it was hard for them to get away for very long anyway, and so they decided to go on back that night and tend their stock and their place, so towards evening, they threw their gear on their pack horse, and they got on their saddle horses and headed out. Now, Coming in, you, you dig all the way from Pine Creek, all the way up onto this ridge. Uh, it's kind of adjacent to Red Peak. And um, it was black something, I don't remember what it was called. But anyway, up, up on top there, it kind of benched off below the peak. And there was a big rock slide that went right up on the peak, come down. And it's kind of a bench, a rock strewn bench of boulders and whatnot that the trail went on this bench and maybe went that way for a half mile and then it dropped into this pocket and this little saddle where we had our camp well on the way out they had to come back across that of course and so we were hanging out in camp everybody was relaxing and all of a sudden Val comes riding in hot hell bent for leather just moving and she slides into camp and says oh my gosh Lloyd's had a terrible wreck. He's really hurt bad. So Rob threw his wood on his horse. I threw mine on my horse and grabbed, I think I had my duster on there. In fact, I know I did. I don't remember what else was on there. Some saddlebags probably. And we took off. And by the time we got to where Lloyd was, it was already really dusky. Um, I got there and my sister was pretty much coming unglued and uh, I took a look at Lloyd and he was bleeding pink foamy blood you know out of his out of his mouth there and that usually means somebody's got a punctured lung so I told Rob I said uh, this guy go by I said you got to get down to town and get the EMTs and and get them coming because I said he's hurt bad so Rob swung back on his Mustang had a nice little Palomino Mustang and away he went and I got the pack horse unsaddled and not well unloaded I left all the horses saddled but I pulled the gear off them and I found a boulder that was kind of lean back like a like a lawn chair shaped thing from the ground up and I grabbed them sleeping bags and I put a sleeping bag down and I, as gently as I could, I, I lifted Lloyd by under his arms and drug him over there and set him 
in that sleeping bag leaning against that boulder because I knew you can't lay somebody down that's been lung shot you know they'll suffocate and uh, so I got him nested in and I got the horses squared away by then it was dark I was dragging wood in off that rock slide, you know, a lot of trees roll down off of the top from over the years and there was a lot of dead wood in there on that bench. So I drug it over in a great big pile, got a fire going and I dug out a blue tarp out of the out of the panniards and I brought them over onto this little knob, this little rocky knob bench. It was the only place in the whole area you could land a helicopter, but you had to get it right or your boom was going to get caught in the rocks. And I laid that tarp down and put rocks on it to mark a spot where they could land. By then it was pitch dark. Good thing I had that fire going. Um, I had Val settled down. She was pretty scared and upset, of course you can imagine. And so uh, we sat down in there and waited, and it was probably about 11 o'clock, a snowstorm come in. Came blowing in over the big holes, and it snowed like a banshee sideways across this bench. And we're up on this open bench, you know, way up on the top of the hills in the mountains. And it was pretty cold. and. So we made sure Val nested in with Lloyd so she could help keep him warm and keep warm herself. And and uh, I had my duster and my horse and my uh, I think I had a poncho or something with me. I don't remember what I had, but anyway, I had something to lay on and uh, had that duster around me. And I just kept that fire going all night. And this helicopter shows up about. We heard him thumping up the canyon you know quite a ways away up the valley down there and you know thwop 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 and I'm thinking well here it comes here's the rescue you know and so I got flashlights out and shined them onto that blue tarp and of course the wind's blowing and it's snowing and I see this helicopter way down in the in the basin below us in the in the valley so I grab the flashlight I start giving him an SOS and pretty soon they see me and up the hill they come they come right on up the mountain, and when they got over us, the wind was just buffeting. I mean, you could just hear the blades cutting in, and the thing was rocking, and it was, uh, I could see two big white discs in there inside the bubble. I didn't know what it was at the time, and pretty soon the helicopter, he just gives up. He peels off, goes right back down the valley, and you heard him leave, and they were gone. So got back in, Val was all nested in. I got re-nested and got the fire built up and and decided that that was a no-go for, for that night. So I think I tried to catch some sleep and I think about 4.30 in the morning I heard horses' hooves hitting those rocks down on that slide on the other end. I got up, got the fire built up and about that time into camp comes Roger Millward, the sheriff of Teton County, Idaho, or Wyoming rather, and Kim Cook, who was sheriff of Teton Valley, Idaho, they came riding in on horses and they said, uh, Randall, um, the EMTs are about 30, 40 minutes behind us. They said, uh, not much you can do here if you want to just take your horse and head on back. And, um, and Rob was with them also. Rob had come back in. And uh, we got to talking, and I told him about what I'd seen on that helicopter. And he said, that was my eyes. <laughs> He'd never rode in a helicopter before. I haven't either. And in a storm, in a blizzard at night in the mountains, <laughs> his eyes were as big as pie plates. You know, <laughs> it was, he could see them. Anyway, uh, he said he got down to the truck and he just threw that Mustang right in the trailer and took off. He said, I ran into an elk in the middle of the night. Sucker was laying right in the trail, jumped up about spooked me right out of my horse. And, and anyway, he got down there and he said he broke all land speed records going over Pine Creek Pass with a horse trailer. Got to Victor, called the sheriff's office and the whole thing got organized from there. And they picked him up in the helicopter because he's the only one that knew where we were. And, uh, 
Anyway, uh, Lloyd ended up being evacuated right at dawn the next morning. I had gone on back to camp with Rob and was exhausted. You know, you don't sleep that well the night before hunting season anyway. You're usually keyed up and then to hunt all day and then to spend all night doing that, I was wore out. So uh, anyway, they evac'd him out to Jackson Hospital the next morning at dawn. And when I got back out of the mountains, I found out he had punctured a lung and collapsed it. And they'd reinflated it and got him going. And he was fine after that. He got well. And now how this horse wreck occurred in the first place, uh, my sister was relating to me that when they got up out of camp and headed up the hill, they got up to that bench and started along that bench and she realized that she hadn't uh, remembered to tighten her cinch and her horse saddle was a little loose on her horse so she called Lloyd to stop. He was in the lead and she was leading the pack horse so she stopped and stepped off to tighten her cinch and the pack horse, which I think was a, a younger horse, not real experienced, moved forward and rammed her horse in the butt with the packs and that caused her horse to bolt forward along with the pack horse who was just dallied on the saddle horn and uh, Lloyd was down the trail a short distance well he turned his horse, spun his horse to the right thinking he could just block that narrow trail in, the, in those boulders but Val's saddle horse went underneath his horse's neck and caught the reins on the saddle horn so now you got three horses you know stampeding down this narrow rocky bench and I don't know whether his horse bucked or whether he just spun off or what but he came off and he landed on a rock Val showed it to me it was embedded in the in the ground and it was shaped like a cone like about the size of a traffic cone and he landed on it right here on his chest and you know crushed his chest and punctured his lung so uh, that's how that wreck occurred to begin with and um, it was just fortunate that everything went as well as it did you know I don't recall what horse Val was riding I just don't remember that it might have been that Appaloosa named Mouse I just can't recall I do remember the horse I was riding and her name was Char. She was a big black mare, quarter horse mare, and um, we flew down that trail, you know, <laughs> to that to get to Lloyd. I mean, we were we were moving a lot faster than I'd ever go if it wasn't an emergency on a rough plate, piece of ground like that. And I found out later, she was Char belonged to my sister, and she loaned her to me. I don't remember why, but. Found out later that son of a gun bucked more often than not with people and I rode her for a couple of weeks that elk season off and on and she never gave me any trouble at all. Apparently she liked me. But uh, boy, if she didn't like you, you were in for it. We had a happy ending to it, but that's one of them stories and uh, hope you enjoy it. Hey, some horsemen going by. Jen! Come here. Come here. Howdy. Come on. Anyway, uh, thanks for your patience with my stories.